Aloha, this is uh, Dr. Marcus Hester for part three. Uh, it's called Revival Prayer Movement. So just another five to ten minutes. We're going to talk about the prayer movement and how that's important to the revival movement that's uh, coming uh, or in now and is coming here in the future. Uh, before I do that, I want to encourage you, there's two parts. Part one is why revival, why is God bringing this end time revival? They're called the next great move of God. Uh, they call it the third great awakening. And what God is doing is why revival is simply, we're going to see one of the greatest end time harvest of souls that the world has ever seen. A lot of people are believing there are one billion souls. So a great task is at hand. And it's not about feeling good. It's not about this or that. It's about God loves people. It's based on 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that the Lord is slow to coming back to this earth. Why? Because it all wants the world to repent and come to the kingdom of God. Basically, none should perish. He loves us. Uh, secondly, the part two, we did a teaching on how it's going to happen. Think of a, uh, if you've ever gone fishing, they throw out these great nets. So God in his uh, infinite way is, is throwing out a great uh, net uh, called a drag net. And he's using it through churches called revival hubs. The movement here is called revival hubs arising. And God is raising up revival hubs all over the world. Um, and we're identifying those. So if you go to Houston or go to Singapore, or go to Hong Kong, go to Beijing, go to London, go to Australia, Australia and Austria, that there will be hubs all over the world that God will bring in uh, the unbeliever uh, to the kingdom. So that's part two called Revival Hubs Arising. So go back and listen to that. This one is going to be dealing with prayer. And I'll, I'll be as quick as I can on this. Prayer is simply like this. In war, there's the uh, ground troops, which is the army, the navy, which covers the waters, but God prepares a way through the Air Force and, and bombing and uh, the land uh, like we know in the Middle East and Syria and all these areas. So spiritually, what God is doing is he's preparing the way. He's preparing the way through prayer. And right now there's a, a prayer movement. A lot of people ask me, what is this prayer movement? I'll just relate it to John the Baptist. Remember when Jesus came back or was coming to the earth? John the Baptist was taking people and getting people ready to receive Jesus. So prayer is like the John the Baptist anointing, preparing the way. And God, what he's doing in this end time, he's raising up prayer movements. Uh, there's several of them, thousands of them around the world. Off the top of my head, we just came back from Arizona, 365 Global Prayer Network with uh, Pastor Syed. Uh, then there's, uh, we just came back from Austin and had a chance to meet this uh, brother is uh, is called 24/7 uh, uh, prayer. They're doing there with with 30 to 40 churches in the area coming together. Um, there's um, a lot of prayer. There's one we're doing. I'll give you later. It's called the National Prayer Line. Every once a week, people from all over the world are coming together in prayer as well. But this movement is preparing the way. So if you can get any takeaway from this clip is that the prayer movement is a now movement. The purpose is preparing for revival, getting the church to wake up. There's always a remnant of people coming first before the masses come. Let me say that again. There's always God raises up a remnant before he raises or the masses come in. And the prayer movement is that remnant group. And if God has called you, you need to hook up or link up um, to prayer movements. And I want to give you a website. It's called revivalwatch.org. We'll help you identify some of the prayer movements around the world. It's also where the revival hubs are, but go to revivalwatch.org, go under contacts, send us your information, and then we'll get that uh, information out to you as well. So let me just give you a few scriptures on prayer. Uh, 2 Chronicles 7:14. If my people who are called by my name will hump themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So the first part about prayer is simply God is raising up the believer, and not the unbeliever, the believer, to come together and pray. And that's the first call. The second call of prayer is, is found in the Lord's Prayer. I'm reading Matthew 6, 9, 9, 9 through 13. 
This is then and this is how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Let me just stop right there. The purpose of prayer is taking his will, his kingdom on in heaven and bringing it down to earth. So the purpose of prayer is praying God's perfect will. Uh, good scripture, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all this other stuff will come together. So we just get, prayer is simply praying his will, his purposes from heaven and bring it down on earth. Another scripture which is good on prayer is Isaiah 56, 7. Uh, I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted in my altar. For my house will be, ha be called a house of prayer for all nations. It's not just one event, one location, or one region. God is raising up, uh, praying for the world, pray for regions, pray for nations and internationally. And lastly, well, why should I come together? Uh, with prayer. I mean, why can't I just do it individually? Well, it's found in Matthew 18, 19. If two or three are come together on this earth about anything that you ask, it will be done to them and the Father in heaven. There's another scripture says, if one shall send a thousand to flight, two shall send ten thousand to flight. There's power when we come together corporately. Uh, John 17, Jesus, uh, a prayer that he stressed to his people was he wanted people to come together in unity, and we're seeing churches and leaders come together for the purpose of prayer. So my takeaway from this, find prayer, we're in a prayer movement. And secondly, get connected. Get connected to that prayer uh, corporate group, and God, get ready. God, there's a calling on not just a few, on all, and God wants you to realize that we're in this prayer movement, and it's time. Also, too, before we close today, RevivalWatch.org, uh, RevivalWatch.org. Go to the contact page, and you'll see our national prayer line. It's every Friday uh, at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning uh, uh, Pacific time, as well as in New York. I think it's 11, depending on the time change, and 12 internationally. So go on and be a part of that. But find that place to pray. Uh, find that place to pray. Get connected. We're in the prayer movement now. I call the John the Baptist preparing the way for one of the greatest moves of God, the third great awakening, the next great move of God. But God bless you. Uh, next one, part, we're going to do part four. And we're going to talk about the wealth transfer. God is using, not only do we have to get ready spiritually, we all have to, have to get ready in the natural for the harvest is coming. Where are we going to put them? Like knowing the ark. I call the Noah Project. God bless you and keep you, and we'll talk to you on the next clip. Aloha.